So this chicken wing sticker I got back in 2014 uh, after attending a printmaking conference in Detroit, Michigan. Um, uh, back in the U.S., uh, I was attending a, either a international or regional printmaking conferences at least once or twice a year. Um, and the conferences are nice because uh, they're an opportunity to uh, not just connect with other artists who work in the same medium, but um, they're kind of like, uh, like reunions in some way where um, you see a lot of the same people when you attend these conferences over like several years. And I'd been at going to conferences uh, uh, for eight years, so I would see a lot of the same people um, or I'd run into old friends who I'd gone to school with um, and we'd, you know, at that point after graduating we'd be maybe living in different states or moved to different places and uh, so it was an opportunity to see each other again and kind of reconnect at the conferences. Um, and the way the conferences go is during the day, um, usually it's academic things, uh, the conference is always, always hosted by a, a university college. And um, so during the day, you'd go to lectures, artist talks. Um, there'd be uh, maybe uh, museum exhibitions, uh, tactical demos. Um, and then in the evenings uh, was, was kind of a time to socialize and get together and just uh, hang out with other printmakers. Um, uh, so usually in the evenings, we'd be at you know, bars or restaurants uh, and, and just uh, hang out and socialize. Um, and that's how I got this chicken wing sticker. Um, I was uh, with a group of friends um, uh, and uh, one of the guys sitting next to me who I was chatting with, um, I didn't know him really well. I met him very briefly um, uh, back when I was in grad school. He had come to visit because um, uh, he was thinking about attending that grad school when I was already in my second year there. And uh, so he had just come to visit, see, you know, kind of have some chat with the faculty, show his portfolio, um, and, uh, and just kind of see what, I guess, the, the program was like there. Uh, he ended up going to a different school, so I, I didn't really get to know him very well. I maybe chatted with him like 15 minutes back then. But then I ran into him again uh, at this conference. Uh, he is, you know, kind of like a friend of a friend. Uh, a good friend of mine uh, was going to the same school he was. Um, and so uh, he was sitting next to me amongst uh, a group of other friends, and uh, and just talking about art and printmaking. Um, and so I remember that uh, kind of later in the evening when, uh, so we're just chatting there. I don't remember what the conversation was about, but at some point he reaches into his wallet and he pulls out this sticker and he hands it to me and he says, put this on something that has power over you because you can't take it seriously if it has a chicken wing on it. Uh, and then on the back he wrote, think differently. So um, yeah, I've kept it all this time and uh, I haven't actually peeled it off or stuck it on anything that uh, has power over me. Um, I like it the way it is, but I don't know, maybe one day. This uh, 1,000 uh, franc banknote um, was given to me as a gift uh, when I was an undergraduate in college. Uh, at East Carolina University. Um, at the time when I first started studying printmaking at uh, ECU, uh, one of my kind of main interests was in paper currency. Um, I was really interested in uh, not just the kind of artistry that went into the, the hand engraving of, of plates to print money, uh, but also the, uh, the kind of technology that went into uh, printing currency. Things like watermarks, um, iridescent inks that shift color depending on how you're holding it in the light, um, images that can only be seen under black light. Uh, all these things were really interesting to me, how you had this combination of this old 16th century engraving process with these high-tech contemporary uh, security measures uh, in order to prevent um, you know, a, a bill from being counterfeited. Um, uh, so. For me, I looked at it, you know, on a, uh, technical aspects as being kind of the highest quality print you could get. Um, uh, but also conceptually, it was really interesting to me uh, because um, each, each country has, you know, really different uh, imagery on their, on their currency. 
and I, I always found it really interesting how uh, each country approached um, you know distilling its values its culture and history down to a single image represented on its currency um, and, uh, and how they uh, went about kind of reaching that point and how they settled on, a, on the, those images. Um, so that was always interesting to me. And so for that reason, I always studied uh, currency a lot when I started um, as a young printmaker in college. Um, as it turned out, when in my junior year, um, one of my roommates, his father, uh, dealt in rare coins and currency. Uh, so he collected it and then sold it at auctions and such. Uh, and so one time his, uh, his dad came to visit and um, he brought some, uh, some old bills with him. I guess his, my roommate had told him kind of what my interests were in printmaking and so he brought some things for me to look at. Um, one of the things he was showing me were uh, uh, old U.S. currency from shortly before the revolution or shortly after the uh, Revolutionary War. Uh, and uh, it was interesting because I didn't know at the time that um, after the Revolutionary War, uh, each state had its own currency. So if you, you know, were traveling into another state, you had to exchange your money uh, into that state's currency. Uh, it'd be like if uh, you were living in Dubai and you wanted to go into Sharjah and buy something, you had to exchange your money because Sharjah was using a different currency than Dubai. Um, uh, so. I found that really interesting looking at the different different states uh, individual currencies uh, and then he was showing me other things too um, like uh, German currency from World War II um, and then he gave me as a gift uh, before he left uh, this 1,000 franc banknote um, as a I guess as a kind of inspiration uh, so I've held on to this uh, ever since uh, haven't ever taken it out of the plastic sleeve that it was in um, and I actually occasionally use this as a uh, uh, bookmark sometimes when I'm reading. These four prints I got while I was a student at ECU. Um, they were uh, show posters for um, final exhibitions uh, for graduating students. Um, at ECU it was customary like once uh, you were having your final exhibition and, and uh, getting ready to graduate, you would uh, make a poster to hang up in the, the art building to promote your exhibition so people would you know when the exhibition was and where to go. Um, sometimes the exhibitions were held inside the college, sometimes they were outside. Um, uh, but it was nice because like around the uh, end of that, that uh, spring semester when people were graduating, you know, the, the building would get filled with these kind of unique posters. And um, a lot of times, you know, with uh, graduating students, either either trade posters or, you know, if you just really wanted it, you would just pull it off the wall and take it with you. Um, and so that's how I got some of these. Um, trying to think, I think two of these were trades. Uh, maybe three of these, I think, were were trades. This one with Stephen, I know, with the baseball players, I definitely got as a trade. I believe Cynthia and Head were trades. Uh, Hannah, for sure, I pulled this one off the wall. I know as, as soon as I saw it, I was like, wow, that's a great poster. I'm taking that. And uh, so that's how I got this one. Um, it was kind of funny because I remember uh, chatting with a friend of mine uh, right around the time we were getting ready to graduate and we were making posters for our shows. Um, and he had made a particularly good one, I thought. And, um, uh, and he was commenting on how... Um, you know, he'd put up his posters and by the next day they were being taken down because people were just, you know, stealing them off the walls to take them home. Um, and then I think I had joked that, um, you know, if you make a bad poster, uh, nobody goes to your exhibition. And if you make a good poster, people take them off the walls and nobody goes to your exhibition. This print I got in 2007 when I was in school at East Carolina University studying printmaking. It was a Valentine's Day gift uh, from a good friend of mine who was there as a grad student while I was at ECU as an undergrad. And uh, she had printed this uh, edition of Lino Cuts um, as gifts for everyone in the studio who was uh, there in the printmaking department. 
so I just came into um, the studio one day and sat down at my desk and saw this print laying on there um, with this, you know, really nice depiction of uh, two lobsters and a heart. And um, I really like her, uh, her technique for her carving uh, for this lino cut. Um, but the other reason I, main reason I like this print is uh, there's just kind of a nostalgia to it for me. Um, just thinking back of my time as an undergrad at ECU, um, particularly because you know, printmaking, we were the, the smallest department uh, within the, the College of Art. And um, I think we had six of us that were print, ma print majors plus two grad students. Um, and we're all really close, um, and we didn't just study together, we, we were really good friends outside of school too. Uh, and we've stayed in touch still ever since graduation. Um, and so, yeah, I look at this and kind of reminisce about, uh, you know, just being with good friends in, in college. Uh, so this t little temporary tattoo I got here in the UAE, um, I don't remember the name of the holiday. Uh, but it was uh, a local holiday where I guess it was customary to hand out candy, uh, little gifts, something like this. And so one of my uh, co-workers had given me this little bag of candies. Um, and uh, normally I you know, don't eat that much candy, but I was I pulled out the pieces of gum that were in there and I, was, and I, I took that. And when I unwrapped it, it had this uh, really interesting temporary tattoo of like a... This guy who I can't really make out whether he's supposed to be like a superhero or a villain. Um, but, you know, I can see he's throwing up either like a peace sign or like rock and roll. I can't quite decide. But, um, yeah, I mean, I guess I just kept it because I enjoyed the little illustration. Um, I also think it's kind of funny when I look at this that, you know, it's somebody's job to illustrate and print these little temporary tattoos. So this here is a little fortune uh, I received out of a fortune cookie from a Chinese restaurant back home in the U.S. Um, normally I just toss these things out, they're you know amusing and then you throw them out, but I, I kept this one uh, because the, uh, the fortune reads, the respect and help of influential people will soon be yours. Uh, then it gives some lucky numbers. Uh, and then on the back it says, today. Um, so, I don't know, maybe I keep it just because I hope that maybe one day the respect and help of influential people will be mine. <laughs> but um, now that I think of it, uh, I've never received a fortune cookie from a Chinese restaurant here in the UAE. So I guess, I don't know, maybe it's the only thing we, uh, we get out of a, a restaurant in the U.S. Uh, yeah, so this one's kind of funny because, you know, it's... I got this at a, at a fair in Honduras when I went to go visit family um, back, I think, in high school. So I've had this for quite a while. And it's, uh, what it is, it's like a little target practice board. It came with, uh, so I was at the fair and I was playing uh, one of these like little carnival games where you just like, um, you know, you got like a little BB gun and you shoot these little targets off and then you get a prize at the end. Uh, so one of the things I won was this toy dart gun, you know, it's one of those plastic things that has the suction cup darts. Uh, and then this was like the, the target practice thing, I guess you would stick to the wall and shoot at it. Um, but on the back, um, you know, I guess this thing was made in China and it just has a very funny English translation on the back of it for the, like, the warning. Uh, and it reads, uh, it has two points. So the first one reads, Never aim the muzzle at eye of people or eye of animal shoot. Uh, number two, if soft warhead distortion cannot catch up, please scald hot water. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it was really funny trying to like wrap your head around what point two actually means. And so we were, uh, I remember being with my brother, and, like as soon as I got it, I was like started showing to my brother and sister, we were kind of laughing about it. Um, and then uh, I remember we, t we were just like taking and then I took it to my uncle and he said, hey, read this. And then he did like, he reads point one and then, and then and you knew exactly like looking at their face when they got to point two because their expression just completely changed to confusion. You're just looking at these and it was really funny just watching someone trying to make sense of the translation. Um, 
And uh, so yeah, I mean, I've been keeping it and like I occasionally just, for whatever reason, share it with people and it's kind of funny. Uh, I remember when I was in grad school, um, I me and uh, my studio mates were just uh, in the studio, we were working and kind of hanging out. Uh, and one of them had brought up uh, some like bad like translation. And, um, and then I, I was like, oh, like here, read this. And I pulled it out again. And again, he starts, he reads point one and then he starts like, he gets maybe like three words into the second one and he just can't stop laughing. And he couldn't even finish reading it. So um, yeah, so this is like just one of those little things like, keep that's just kind of fun to share with people occasionally so that's why this is in my collection these prints I had got from a really good friend of mine uh, Bill Fick uh, I had met Bill Fick back in 2007 um, when I was a student at ECU studying printmaking and um, he had come in as a visiting artist uh, to give a lecture and uh, the students there uh, all helped him print uh, an edition of uh, this big lino cut that he had, uh, he had brought with him. And um, uh, this was pretty common for visiting artists uh, coming to the printmaking department where, um, you know, the artist would work with the students, they'd help them print an edition, and in return, as kind of like a payment for assisting uh, in printing the edition, um, you would get one of the prints. Um, so. That's why I ended up getting uh, this, this really big lino cut from him. Uh, in addition to that, we also printed these, uh, we screen printed these posters to promote his, his lecture at the, at the college. So I have one of these too with me um, uh, that I still have in my collection. Um, but uh, after he had left the, the college, after his, his you know, lecture, um, I continued to run into him at conferences. Um, so I would end up seeing him, you know, you know, once or twice a year, just kind of casually bumping into them um, at these uh, national or international printmaking conferences. Uh, so we'd kind of kept touch here and there and, um, throughout, uh, you know, several years um, until after I had graduated uh, from uh, the Heron School of Art and Design, I finished grad school um, in Indianapolis and I was moving back to North Carolina um, to kind of figure out what I was going to be doing uh, now that I had 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 my MFA um, and it kind of just worked out where um, he was trying to start up uh, an independent print shop um, in North Carolina um, at the same time I was moving back and he needed some assistance in getting it started uh, so you know me fresh out of grad school uh, you know looking for kind of my next career move it, it you know I was just at the right place at the right time I think um, uh, so I was one of the uh, Kind of founding members of uh, Super Graphic, which was the the print shop we had started, um, along with uh, another friend of mine, Raj Banug, uh, who I have a, a quite a few prints of his in my collection. Um, so it was kind of nice just being in our own space, our own studio, um, and just being artists in in Durham, North Carolina. And um, and through my time there, I ended up collecting quite a few prints, uh, particularly from Bill, just because we were around each other all the time. Uh, so we traded some work, um, uh, some things uh, I had kind of actually pulled out of uh, the studio. We had this, uh, this bin um, underneath one of the screen printing tables where we would just toss um, any kind of scrap paper or kind of misprints or scrap prints uh, that we didn't want and we just left them in this, this communal bin and you could just pull one out, a print out of there if you just needed to test print something on. You just needed any kind of sheet of paper. And uh, occasionally there'd be something nice in there and I would fish it out and, and hang on to it. Um, and so that's how I ended up pulling a few prints from Bill. I don't think he knows I, I have these. Um, uh, like this one of this big yellow head uh, uh, with his like zombie head. Um, this one I had seen, he was working on a, on a, I think a mural project where he had tiled a few of these heads um, in like a, on a wall or on a floor. Uh, and so he had, I, I think just tossed a few of the extra ones in the communal bin and I just fished it out and, uh, to hang on to it. Um, that's also I, I think I got this uh, Be Obvious Make Posters um, uh, promotional thing that I think Bill had made for Supergraphic. Um, and while I was at Supergraphic I also did a lot of uh, workshops there. 
Um, so I was you know, often teaching, like probably at least once a month, uh, doing a, a printmaking workshop uh, on screen printing. Um, and so uh, we had a few screens there that we kind of had reserved for doing the technical demos. And then you know, the, the people who were taking the workshop would make up their own imagery uh, from the workshop. Um, uh, but uh, so I also ended up collecting a few prints uh, that way just from things I'd kind of kept from uh, uh, doing demonstrations during workshops. Um, uh, even now when I go back to, to the U.S., uh, usually over the summers, um, you know, I'm still in touch with Bill and I, I kind of go back and see what's going on with uh, Super Graphic now that I'm not there anymore. Um, and, uh, you know, Bill, like, is, I think, one of the hardest working people I've ever met. Um, in addition to being an artist and who's, who's constantly making new work, uh, he also teaches at a university. Um, he also works with uh, um, manufacturers of printmaking materials. He's got a sponsorship from them. Does uh, you know travels the uh, country doing visiting artist gigs at universities, um, doing workshops uh, in association with Speedball, who's um, a well-known uh, manufacturer of printmaking materials. Uh, he even managed to get them to produce. Uh, our own brand of ink. So there's a, actually a, a, a can of printmaking ink called Super, Super Graphic Black, named after him and his and uh, Super Graphic. Um, in addition to that, he also, you know, has a family and, and all this, and I don't know how he has time to, to juggle everything. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, for me, he's, I think, been one of the most influential artists I've worked with because um, just being around him and seeing how how productive he is 